A few years ago, I went to an exhibition at the British Museum, and it was all about Stonehenge and Stone Age stuff. And there were loads of amazing things there, but the most amazing to me was this massive auroch skull. Now, an auroch is an ancient predecessor of the cow, only it's much bigger. And this skull is a wild auroch bull. It's like this. It's got horns out here, it's huge. And I'm stood in front of this thing, and I suddenly realize that sticking through the forehead, right here, the thickest part of the bone, is this really small flint axe head. Well, there's an information plaque, and it turns out that if you happen to be a Stone Age herder trying to breed your cattle down to a safe and workable size, Getting a wild bull in among the cows can set the program back for years, and hence the confrontation. Maybe. I'm just standing there in the dark, listening to that crashing sound in the bushes, a bull in the night, and wishing I'd brought a bigger axe. Can we ever really share how it felt to live in such ancient times. Can we imagine ourselves back that far? What might we find there? Well, let's look around the rest of the exhibition. We've got polished axe heads. There's a headdress made of reindeer antlers, golden neck bands. It's all beautiful. And it's all museum stuff. It's kind of hard to get close to it not just because of the thick glass, but because it feels alien, foreign. It's giving me tribe and difference and value and hierarchy. These objects, these possessions, can distract our mind's eye away from the people who actually owned them, or more importantly, the many more people who never owned anything like that and wouldn't see so much gold in their entire lives, all those people. If we try to understand our ancestors only through the stuff we dig up, I think we risk getting a distorted picture. The stuff is important. It's really important. It reveals event. It reveals culture. But for a shared feeling, I think we need to look somewhere closer. I think we need to look inside ourselves. That Wild auroch skull and the little flint axe really got to me, I think, just because it has so little stuff about it. It's pure story. It's one night. I'm writing some books of fiction about this different period of ancient history, the arrival of the first settlers here on this island of Ibiza two and a half thousand years ago. It's a fascinating process, learning about all the history and all the stuff but also trying to imagine how those people would really have felt. I've lived with my characters now for years. We have our differences. We wear different clothes. We understand different horizons. But I've also found that we have a lot in common. Try this. Let's sit with a woman in her garden on an old pine bench pushed up against a wall in the sun. And we're watching her smallest boy climb up into the fig tree, higher and higher. And she glances across at me with a little look that says, Ooh, any minute now, this is going to go horribly wrong. And this little moment of intimacy, it can happen today. It can happen 2,000 years ago. That's how close we are to these people, these impossibly far-off people. They're really right here among us. And we are quite like them as well. And we've carried on far more than we left behind. Think of sharing food, music and dancing and story, sitting round a fire, staring at the stars. If we could remember across lifetimes, these are the things we would remember. Next time you're staring into the flames, imagine yourself joined to every human who's ever got lost in the glow of embers. And of the important things to us now, our hopes and fears for family and friends, 
We share far more with our ancestors than not. And most of all, we share a world. So, what else might we find around the fire that we're missing in the museum? Well, I think if we're stripping back to the basic business of human surviving, we might find some very useful solidarity. Right now, we're doing badly at the business of human surviving, and we need to raise our game. The challenges facing us and the world are daunting. And it's true to say that the ancients never faced anything like this. But they did encounter societal disasters and breakdowns and climatic tragedies, plague and war, ice age. The end of the world lies at the heart of many mythologies. Now, sadly, their survival doesn't guarantee ours. But if we can reach across millennia, and catch another's eye and recognize, even through our fierce modern anxiety, look, you felt the same. You really felt the same. Then we're not so alone, which makes us feel different, which frees us to behave differently. If we can really walk alongside the ancient folk who faced, for example, the complete collapse of their civilization following the salination of the Black Sea seven and a half thousand years ago. Doesn't sound like much right now. Massive deal back then. If we can reach that empathy, maybe we can make it all a little bit less about us now, our trauma, our loss. Maybe we, like them, like so many, can try to answer uncertainty with learning, adversity with adaptation. And maybe it gets easier to say, yes, we too live in a time of change. We too will need to make an unplanned journey. Let's go back to our farmer in her garden, watching her son. Is my life now worth more than hers. Hers may be a bit shorter than mine, but both are vanishingly brief by the standards of real time. No, if the dead are just like us, if they struggled and loved and cried in the night and rose in the morning with homemade hope and died, how much compassion can we feel for them? A compassion we can share with the past is one we can offer the future. We live among the dead. Who we are depends on which of the dead we choose to live among, as well as which of the living. Dissolving the glass between us and our past might help us question the walls we've laid between ourselves and the rest of humanity. Each era of humans has faced their bull in the night. The threat that comes just for us, the challenge to which we must rise. Our ancestors knew how to beat hard odds, so let's stand with them. Let's not face our bull in the night alone. Thank you.